Everybody, this is Julian from Raw Physique again. Today I'm actually going to do a video on bodybuilding. Finally, it has been a while, but I'm back to give you some fitness tips and tricks to help you get that body that you want, that physique you want, that muscle on your frame that you want. So today's video is about two a day workouts, twice a day workouts. Now something like this is aimed more at advanced bodybuilders who are doing it for five plus years. If you've been lifting for five plus years and are plateauing out and are natural, as I say again, the big point is you are natural and you are plateauing out, this is something you should definitely try. And I will give you my experience with it and the gains that I've actually made with it. So what is a twice a day workout? And who knew it could happen? Working out twice a day and it actually being beneficial. Usually you hear working out twice a day is too much, you'll get overloaded, you will overtrain, and therefore suffer any gains, whether that be strength or muscle gain. And in theory that is right, but there is a way to do two a day workouts that would be beneficial and actually help your lifts, your strength, and your size. So the average like daytime layout for a twice a day workout would be once in the morning and once in the afternoon or nighttime. A quick example of a routine like that would be a ma the major muscle group in the morning. So like mine, if I'm doing chest, I'll do bench and then I'll do an isolating chest exercise, like dumbbell flies or machine flies, basically something to isolate the chest after that heavy incline or decline or flat bench. So again, major muscle group, chest, and then an isolating exercise for the chest. And that'd be the same thing for the back. You would do pull downs, and then let's say bent over rows for your major back group, or you could do pullbacks and then bent over rows. So you're basically hitting the majority of your back and then you're doing a higher rep for your second exercise just to isolate and localize that muscle. So if we go back for the chest day, let's say you do flat bench and then you do dumbbell flies. That would be your complete workout right there. And then later on that night, what you would do if, if you did chest that morning is you could do something like one-legged squats followed by tricep push downs and then another high rep tricep exercise. So basically what you're doing, if you break it down, if you do a one a day workout and you're doing a push day, you do your chest and then you're doing your triceps. Well, if you separate both of those workouts, you could hit chest harder and then you could recuperate and gain energy and then be able to hit your triceps and shoulders just as hard, which I did. I should mention that you could hit your shoulders and then your triceps on a chest day. So it's a push day. So you should do overhead press and then triceps. So basically splitting them up means you can add more volume to your chest in the morning and then more volume to your shoulders and triceps at the end of the day, opposed to putting them both together and burning yourself out. Because the longest you should work out being a natural, if you're natural, the longest you should work out is anywhere between 45 and 75 minutes. Anything more than that, your body builds up cortisol and it ends up being counterproductive and it's not good and you don't get as good a benefit from that workout. But with the two a day workouts, you could do your just your chest for 30 to 40 minutes and then just your shoulders and triceps for another 30 to 40 minutes. So adding that extra time and that extra volume to each one of those workouts is extremely beneficial and it could totally get you through plateaus, which it did with me. And on top of being able to do more volume, your second workout when you're doing your shoulders and your triceps, if you did them together, if you did your chest, then you tried working out your shoulders and your triceps for a push day, your shoulders and triceps would have lost ATP during that workout. That's the energy for your muscles. And so you wouldn't be able to do as many reps or push as heavy weight. But if they're broken up between two workouts in that day, then your body has time to replenish the ATP, creatine phosphate, and muscle glycogen to your shoulders and your triceps that got hit slightly during that chest workout, and then you could hit those even harder, your triceps and your shoulders. So therefore, they would have more volume in that workout, and you could push more weight, therefore more gains. And this has totally helped me out with plateauing out, because I'm a natural lifter, and I've been lifting for literally decades at this point. I'll post up a video of my current physique as I continue blabbering on about two-a-day workouts, which you should definitely try if you haven't. Ugh. 
tennis elbow and I don't even play tennis. Ugh. So real quick, let me just explain my back workout because I told you what I do. That's, that's what my chest day is. Even though I add like hanging, like body weight hanging, where you hold on to something for a minute or a minute and a half. That's at the end of my chest day routine, which is at the end of my second workout that day. But anyway, that's my chest routine. Back routine would be pull downs and bent over rows with like higher reps, 12 to 15 reps for my bent over rows, and then 12 reps, 10 to 12 reps for my pull downs or pull ups. And that's, that's my morning routine. And then later on that day for the second half of my back workout, I'll do leg curls and then arm curls and then abs. And that's literally my, my whole back workout routine for the day. So again, let me explain the extra volume you could get from splitting up between two a day workouts. So let's say on a normal workout routine, you work out once a day, you're doing chest. You'll do 10 or like a pull day. You'll do 10 sets with chest and then you'll do eight to 10 sets with like triceps and then squats or one-legged squats well so that's 10 for chest 10 for triceps and then squats if you want to do something like that which i do that workout right there will easily bring you to slightly over an hour so let's say like 65 minutes for that workout maybe 60 if you have like a 60 second rest period in between the sets so if you split those up from chest the 10 sets of chest and the, let's say 10 sets of triceps and then some squats. You split those up. You could do 12 to 13 to 14 sets of chest. So that's already adding a ton of volume. You're literally able to destroy your chest in a good way. And then you got your triceps, which you could do 10, 12 or 13 sets of triceps and shoulders. I keep forgetting about shoulders. Ugh. So I end up doing overhead press with this and I, I do overhead press before I do my triceps. So by splitting up the chest, I could do more volume on chest by splitting up the triceps and overhead press. I could do a lot more volume with that as well. So I could bring each workout to 40, 40 or 45 minutes easily so therefore i'm working out more throughout the day and i have more energy for the second half of my workout just as long as i do the second half of my workout in the middle of the day or the end of the day now one thing you don't 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 want to do is you don't want to do a chest workout in the morning and then do a chest workout at night or in the middle of the day that's not good you can injure yourself and you're not helping your muscle out, you're not helping your strength out, you're not helping anybody out. But you will be helping yourself injure your damn shoulder. But anyway, so if you bared with me through that explanation, then you could see why separating both of those workouts, you could do more volume and then have more energy for the second part of your workout, rather than having them sandwiched together with less volume and then having less energy for the second half of your workout, which would be shoulders and then triceps. So how long do you have to wait you might ask, to let that ATP and glycogen fill those bad boys back up before you can hit them again in the gym. At minimum, five to six hours is best. So if you worked out at eight in the morning, let's say seven, that's probably more realistic. Work out at seven in the morning until eight. Five or six hours from then would be nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two. So I'd give it until at least at minimum one o'clock two o'clock would be better three o'clock would be even better than that but you need your muscles to gain that energy back from your chest workout because when you do your chest your shoulders get hit a little bit and your triceps get hit a little bit same thing with your back if you're doing your back your biceps get hit a little bit so they're already losing a little bit of energy so you want them to build up any atp creatine phosphate or muscle glycogen that they can to fill the reserves back up so you can go ahead and hit them at, you know, 100% at your next, next workout, your second workout. Because otherwise, if you hit them, your triceps after your chest or your biceps after your back, then they're really only running at like 80, 75 or 80%. You wait six hours and let those reserves build back up, you could hit them at 100%. And that's, that's you know, the big thing right there. And being able to focus more on your chest than your back without extending the workout past, you know, an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes and end up basically having negative effects from it because you've worked out too much. So I'm gonna post up along the sides here. These are just random volumes and you can see, uh, you know, it kind of looks like a heartbeat almost. If you look at your one rep maxes and your total volume for 
the chest day or the back day or your triceps or your biceps. You know, it looks a, a little bit like a, a heartbeat and hopefully on, on an upward trajectory because that means you're making progress. But if you're advanced and you're plateauing out that upward trajectory, the, the upward slope, that will be more horizontal with little peaks and dips. And my peaks and dips are like either adding heavier weight and so therefore it's less volume but heavier weight but then it ends up building back up to more volume than it was or if you take off a week or something and it takes you two or three weeks to get back from that recovery week because taking a recovery week is really good but you do lose strength and volume when you do that especially if you're an advanced bodybuilder who's been working out for a while if you're just starting the gym you could throw around any weights you want and you're going to gain strength and size or if you're on the juice the roids the trt the d ball or whatever the hell people take but if you're natural you've been doing it for a while that trajectory slowly kind of levels out a little bit and so you're fighting for like every little gain you can so that's why when you use and utilize something like this, the two-day workouts, then you could add volume to each one of those body parts and be able to make gains from it. Because that's, that's how you make gains, is you push your muscles past the point of them being comfortable, they get little microscopic tears, and they grow. And again, that slows down a lot for advanced bodybuilders. I will say this even works really well if you're cutting too, because when you cut and you start losing that fat, at First, it's okay, and you can still make gains, and you can still get size, you can still get strength, but then eventually, once your body fat depletes enough, you start losing strength, like a lot of strength. Like I, on one cut, I could bench over 300 pounds. By the end of the cut, you're talking, I was benching 245, uh, maybe twice. So, you know, maybe 260, 265 was my max. So I easily lost 50 pounds on my bench just from doing, this wasn't even a crazy cut either. But once you start losing that fat, once you get down enough weight, then you actually will start losing strength, especially on big compound lifts like that. Because your body just does not have the energy. You're basically running at 50%, like a car with not that much gas in the tank. So again, with these two workouts a day, you could empty one tank in the morning, let it fill up and then empty the other tank at night or in the middle of the day. But it has helped me keep and even gain strength on my cuts while doing this. The biggest issue is, is actually having the time to hit the gym twice a day. If you have a home gym and you can go home during your lunch or something like that, then that's awesome and good for you because most people can't. But as an alternative, if you have a gym membership, you could always do the major body parts like back or chest. When you do that in the morning, you can go to the gym because it's a lot easier to go to the gym and have like a full-size bench or back machines opposed to buying a bench or back machines. And then you could purchase like dumbbells or even like a kettlebell or something like that for your house. And then that's where you could do your shoulders like later on in the day or when you get home. You could do your shoulders or curls or overhead tricep extensions, all with that, you know, the dumbbell or kettlebell or whatnot. That's an alternative just in case you don't want to go back to the gym two times in one day. But anyway, this has worked for me and I'm going to keep doing it. And as you saw a minute ago or even still, I have been able to push my volume higher than I was before, e even while on a cut right now. And my strength and one rep maxes like have gone up as well just from doing this two a day routine. So it for me, it works. I don't have crazy genetics or anything like that. So I'm assuming for a normal person, this would work. You just have to implement it correctly. And if you plateaued out or if you're an advanced bodybuilder, then this should be something you definitely try out. And if you're Natty, because Natty's got to do everything we can. But all right, y'all, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I have an assortment of other workout videos over here and install videos. If you like the video, want more tips and tricks, please subscribe. And all right, y'all, that's it for today. Peace.